The stupid bus is way out in the middle of nowhere. They're screaming at us, get on a bus, get on a bus. What's up? Claim in the middle of nowhere. I'm the killer of the laundry. 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 I'm the So in very simple Bangla language, he's paraphrased this verse. One who has failed to worship with great care, the Lotus Feet of Srimati Radhika, which are the abode of all auspiciousness, and who has not taken shelter of Vrindavan Dham, which is decorated with her beautiful lotus footprints, and who, in his life, has not associated with Srimati Radhika's devotees, whose moods are very deep and grave, and whose hearts and intelligence are fixed in her seva, how will such a person ever experience the bliss of bathing in the ocean of Shamaras? Please understand this most attentively. Then, Thakur Bhakti no Thakur is written. Shimati Radhika is the Acharya of the Mellows of Ujwal Ras. The love between Radha and Madhav is meant to be discussed and contemplated. One who cherishes the lotus feet of Shimati Radhika with great care obtains the priceless jewels of Krishna's lotus feet. Without taking shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Radha, one can never meet with Krishna. The Vedic scriptures declare that Krishna, he is the property of the maid servants of Sri Radha. Abandoning all wealth, followers, wife, sons and friends, and giving up all materialistic activities and speculative knowledge, one should become absorbed in the sweetness of service to Shimata Radharani's lotus feet. Bhakti Nautaku said, Bhakti Noda Paraman. If you don't have any doubt in this process, I myself am evidence for this. This place is called Javad. Javad means Ja means the same, that, and what means a banyan tree. So Maharaj is explaining that the same banyan tree beneath which, what happened? <coughs> Krishna asked for a bhiksha from Radharani. The same tree beneath which Krishna 
took so many different forms and came to pacify Radha Rani's sulky mood. <coughs> Nearby to this place is Kishori Kund. This is the place where Radha Krishna used to meet. Maharaj is saying, we will try next time to go there also. Radha Ji got married to this place, at this place, to Abhimanyu. So this is her in-laws place. Pujipat Devikra Maharaj also explained and Maharaj is also explaining. Radha Rani is internal potency of Krishna. She is his ladani potency, pleasure giving potency. She is not different from Krishna. But if we consider Krishna, Krishna is enjoyer. He is eternal enjoyer. He enjoys all the mellows. So, Krishna, in order to enjoy Parakiya Bhav, Yoga Maya arranges. Krishna ka put Parakiya ne ya is chit ko samjho paare. Krishna ka Parakiya Bhav nahi hota. Radha ji ka gopiyo ka hota hai ye samjho paare. Tab bolo. In order to taste Parkiya Bhav, Radha Rani's Bhav is Parkiya, Maharaj is saying. It is not Krishna's mood is Parkiya. Radha Rani's mood is Parkiya. And because this mellow is the highest enjoying mellow, and in order to relish this mellow, to get this mellow relished by Krishna, Radha Rani is adopting this mellow by the help of Yoga Maya. And Yoga Maya is making this marriage, which is, a, is, which is a sort of fictitious marriage. It is not real marriage, but it is a, a marriage which creates environment and it strengthens the parkiya bhav by which Radha Rani makes Krishna to relish this bhav. So Maharaj is Giving one past, uh, telling one pastime here, in this pastime, once Radha ji adopted sulky mood, I had to keep, <coughs> she adopted sulky mood without any cause and, and uh, stopped meeting Krishna. Krishna wanted to please her, but he, he failed. So with the consultation, uh, having consultation with Lalita and Vishakha, he took a form of Brahman, Bhikshuk. He just wore a Brahmachari, Brahman Brahmachari. He just hold a few books on his one hand and uh, he just uh, wore wooden chappal kharaon, which is called kharaon, and he Wooden sandal. He gave here Bhikshan Dei, Bhikshan Dei. At that time, mother-in-law of Radha Rani, she was making cow dung uh, cake. Because she was busy in that... Yeah, cow dung cake. No cake. Biscuit. Eh? That is not cake. Biscuit. Chapatis. Biscuit. Butter. Patties. Eh? Patties. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Once, once I was reading, I, I read this word, cow dung cake, instead of patty, so I am repeating it. <laughs> anyway, then he, he asked, okay, you take Bhiksha from my daughter-in-law. But Radha Rani refused to go to any person because she says to her mother-in-law that you always defame me and I am not going to confront any Parapurush. 
any other person than my husband. At that time, when she she refused to come, and she was not coming to give viksha, and Jatila was busy in her own way. At that time, Batu, this Brahmachari said, I will not stay here long. It's our tradition that we will stay here only for two or three minutes. We milk a cow, whatever time is taken in milking a cow, only this much is the time a Brahmachari should stay in, in front of any house to ask for the bhiksha. So, Jadila became very much uh, frightened that if he will leave this house, it may be unauspicious and uh, my cows may, kill, may, may die and my son may uh, fall sick or he may not have son like this. So he, she persuaded Radharani, please go and give her bhiksha. I am saying you, I will not defend you like this. Then Radharani, she went in a big plate keeping some rice, dal and atta, everything. She came out and she she was having a long veil, covered her face and when she wanted to give, Krishna said, I won't accept this picture in veil because I don't know who is going to give me this picture. She may be a, a married woman or widow. I can't take picture from widow. Maybe a male. Then, Radha uh, Rani recognized when a person is asking this thing, who is he? And she just dragged her veil and then Krishna said, I am a special type uh, type of uh, brahmachari and beggar. My, my begging, I am not begging for these all things you have brought. I am begging for the sulky mood which you have adopted. And he just bowed down in front of Radha Rani at that time. Then Radha Rani smiled and he poured everything which she brought in her plate on the head of Krishna and that his argument was broken. God Brahman. Once upon a time, Mother Yashoda, she was packing a box, very big box, and putting so many ornaments in it, some clothes also. Krishna came to Mother, Maya, what are you doing? What are you packing and to whom you are going to give it? In fact, she was packing that box for Radha Rani. She wanted to give, send a few gifts to Radha Rani, but she did not disclose this to Krishna. She knew that Krishna may play some notorious activity. So, she said, oh, I am doing anything, I am not going to tell you. She did not reveal anything. Then she sent a message to Javad that please ask Abhimanyu, husband of Radha Rani, come personally. I have packed a few gifts for Radha Rani and he should carry those gifts personally. They are very valuable. When, when this message went to Javad, Abhimanyu came. Krishna realized that where this, this box is going. <coughs> Mother Yashoda, she locked that box, but somehow or other Krishna opened that box, he took off all the ornaments and he sat himself and with his help of friends he again got that box locked. And now in that box he was the Krishna. A real ornament. And Abhimanyu came, he put that box on his head and all the way from Nandgram to Javad, he carried that box. And whom he carrying in that box? Personally he is carrying his rival Krishna. And he bought that box and then he put it in front of his mother. Mother Yashoda has sent, Yashoda Maya has sent this box with ornaments. Eh? Uh, to ma Mother Jadila said, Yashodama has sent this uh, ornaments to, for Radha Rani here, you keep it. Then Jadila said, oh, it's for Radha Rani, you go and carry it to the Radha Rani's room and give it to her. And he carried that box in the room of Radha Rani and he came back. When Radha Rani along with her all Sakhis, they opened the box, they found the real ornament. And this way, this pastime took place. Correct. Once, uh, 
some or other Krishna sneaked into the Radharani's room and they were having very nice pastimes. Sister-in-law of Radharani, Kutila, she saw that Radharani and all Sakis with Krishna, she became very furious. She ran to her mother, mother, look, Krishna has come to our house and she is talking with Radharani. Then Chaitila took her, her son. Abhimanyu. And this way, the whole group, she came to the room of Radharani. But what did this, did they see? There was no Krishna, but there was a deity of Kali. Kali goddess, dem demigoddess. So, when they saw that uh, deity of Kali demigoddess, they became very much disappointed. Oh! So, Maharaj is explaining here, Krishna why you told so light and thus she became upset. You are making false, false allegation on my daughter-in-law. Already she is perturbed by this way. So Krishna Maharaj is explaining here one principle. Krishna may adopt any role. So he may have taken the role of Kali. But form of Kali. He can adopt any form. He, he adopted the form of Kali. But this conception that Kali and Krishna is the same is wrong. Some people say like this. Kali can never become Krishna. Everything, Krishna is the Supreme Personality. So Krishna can take any form. But other forms cannot take Krishna's form. Krishna can, Krishna himself only can take Krishna form. No one is equal and um, uh, what we speak of superior to Krishna. Krishna is saying that uh, Krishna can take any form, therefore we see, sing always Keshav Dhrita Dasavidya Rupa, that all the ten other incarnations, it is Keshav, it is Krishna who has taken those forms. Krishna can take any form, he may become a tree, creeper or any a blade of grass also. Like in the Brahm Vimohan pastimes, at that time Krishna becomes calf, their robe, and he becomes all the covered boys, their stick, and everything was Krishna at that time. But none of these things can take the uh, form of Krishna, because Krishna is uh, Advaitya, he is the originator of everything. Just near to this house, there was a tree of Badri. We went to Kokila one and we saw that Badri tree. Badri means bear. And Krishna used to climb on that tree and used to call Radharani in the voice of Cuckoo. So once Krishna in the night, he came here and he climbed on that tree and he um, called Radharani in the voice of Cuckoo. Radharani recognized that this cuckoo who is crying and who is yelling in the night, this is a special type of cuckoo. So, uh, she wanted to came out. But Jadila today, she was having very strict watch. She was sleeping near the door. As Radharani came near to the door, she said, Who is there? Who is there? Radharani had to go back. Again, Krishna... Uh, uh, call Radharani in the voice of Cuckoo. Whole night this this kept on going on. But Tedila did not allow Radharani to go. The moment he, she used to come she, and uh, at the time Tedila will say, who is there? Who is there? And hence Krishna had to be disappointed that night. So there are uh, many past times where Krishna had to go empty handed also. Once very interesting pastime took place here, Maharaj has so, said so many times. Krishna was feeling very deep separation with Radharani and uh, he was <coughs> too much restless and he wanted to see Radharani immediately, otherwise he will, it appeared as if he will live his life. 
Then he said to his friend, Subal, that you have to arrange something. I cannot live without her. I want to see her. Since long time I have not seen her and I am very much curious and uh, eager to see her. Then uh, how, how we should do it? Subal Sakha made a plan in consultation with Lalita and Vishaka Sakhi. He made a plan. Subal is very beautiful and resembles like Radha Rani. His face and complexion, height, everything resembles like Radha Rani. If they exchange their clothes and their appearance, no one can recognize that who is Subal and who is Radha Rani. So, Subal Sakha, he went to Radha Rani's house. Here He came here in Javad and Chatila was sitting at the door having a very strict call and as a watchman. Oh, you rascal, why you have come? She chastised and escorted Subal because she was very deadly against of Krishna and Subal is very dear friend of Krishna. I don't want to see Krishna here and any of his friends. Why you have come here? He said, Subal said, Oh, I lost my calf and I am looking for my calf. It appears it has gone inside. You mean that your calf is in our, in our khidak where the cows are um, goshala? Yes, I think so. Then she became, Okay, go and see. Then he, Subal Saka went into the goshala in order to see, look for his cow, uh, calf. But he had another plan. From there, somehow or other, he entered into Radha Rani's room and he, <coughs> he said that Krishna is in very, very uh, restless position and very keen and eager to see you. Otherwise, he will not be able to live. He will be become unconscious. When Radha Rani heard the state of Krishna, she became also very disturbed. She said that, I want to go and see him, but how can I go? There is very strict watch around this house. It's very difficult. Then Subal Sakha told his planning. They exchanged their dress. Subal Sakha made Radha Rani Subal Sakha. Just put a turban on her head to hide her hairs and his dhoti and all kurta he gave to Radha Rani. Now he gave a very small calf, new born calf to Radha Rani to cover her front portion and then when Radha Rani went and she was passing through the door, now Radha Rani is going but according to Jatila it is Subal who is going. Oh, you got your calf? And Radha Rani, she is expert in this art, she made a voice of Subal, yes I got it. <laughs> and then he, he left from that place went to Krishna directly. Radha Rani was looking like Subal in a such an accurate manner. When she reached to Krishna, Krishna also could not find that here is Radha Rani. Oh Subal, you have come alone? You have not brought Radha Rani? What is news from Radha Rani? Subal Saka said, Oh, it's very difficult to bring Radha Rani. She is already in an angry mood as well as Jatila is also there in a heavy guard for her, so I could not bring her. Krishna was just going to faint after hearing this news. The moment he was going to faint, she just put off that calf from her lap and Krishna recognized who is she. So this such pastime took place here. God Premanande! We should go to our buses.
higher notes at that time. Everything in this world forgets its nature and adopts opposite nature. The stone melts, Yamuna stops flowing, and trees start shedding some juice. Deer, cows, they will come closer to Krishna to hear it. So what happens? Krishna's food gets imprinted. It. <coughs> Krishna's food gets imprinted on that molten, melted uh, stone. Not only that, Krishna, when a deer comes near to Krishna, that stone also melts and put free some deer and cows. They are also visible here. Don't think that they are false or fictitious. Because in our scriptures like Iskand Puran and many others, it has been mentioned, these scriptures are more than 5,000 years old. There is very clearly mentioning of these footprints, so these footprints are 5,000 years old and when Krishna's pastime was taken place here. Maharaj is raising a question here. We see footprints of Krishna, we see footprints of calf and also some of his friends and also there are some <laughs> footprints of deer. Why it's not so that there is no footprint of Radharani in whole breath? We have seen everywhere footprints of Krishna, Balde, friends, calf, deer, but nowhere we have seen the footprints of Radharani. Is it so that Krishna is playing on the flute and Gopi and Radha, Radharani is not coming? It is not possible. So Maharaj is giving a very good answer. He is himself raising a question and then he is himself giving the answer. So, so mm, uh, interesting. No sooner Radharani comes to Krishna, Krishna takes her feet on his head. So, there is no possibility of Krishna's feet on ground when she is with Radha. With, there is no possibility of Radharani's feet on ground when she is with Krishna. So, when Krishna plays our flute, then only his footprints are visible, not of Radharani. Krishna gives a marmoko pickup feather here. Why? Why? Because there is a name of Radhika in that pickup feather. So he keeps it always. What is that? <laughs> always, always. So long. Oh, just so the. Uh, Translate the meaning of the Skritan which Kanai Prabhuji of Radha Kunda Tatar Oh, all any class, especially high, high class of Brahmi. If anything is seen anywhere and it reminds Krishna, that is why in this case it has been told for the Anything reminding Krishna Radha. There is so much. So in Krishna. Dr. Bhai Jala. Dr. Translation of this kirtan written by Shiva Bhakti Nautakur, which is just sung by Shifat Kanai Prabhu. Bhakti Nautakur is Rasik Vaishnav. In Bhakti Ras, there's one thing, it is called Udipana. It means
in stimulation. Those things in connection with Krishna, which arouse the transcendental sentiments within the heart of the Rasik Vaishnav, they're called Udipana. So, Bhaktivinoda is remembering all these things which stimulate transcendental love, the waves of transcendental love to rise within his heart. So he begins by saying, Radha Kunda Tata Kunja Kutir Govardhana Parvata Jamona Thira. A small cottage in a grove on the banks of Radha Kund. Giraj Govardhan. The banks of the Jamuna. The site of Kusham Sarovar and Manasaganga. And the daughter of Kalinda. That means Yamuna Devi with her very sweet ways. Vansi Bhatt, Gokul, Dhira Samir, Brinda Bona Taru Latika Vanir, and all of the trees and creepers of Vrindavan. Kaga Mrigapul Amalaya Bhattas, Mayora Brahmara Murali Vilas, the many different varieties of colorful birds, the deer, the cool and fragrant breezes from the Malaya mountains, the peacocks, the bumblebees, the pastimes with the flutes, the Venu, Sringa, Parachina, Megamala, Vasanta, Shasanka, Sanka, Karakal, the flute, the buffalo horn bugle, the footprints of cows in the dust, the banks of blackish clouds, springtime, the moon, the conch shell and kartals. <coughs> Yukala vilase anukula jani, lila vilasa odipakamani. I know that all of these elements are very conducive for the loving exchanges between Sri Sri Radha Krishna. And thus, I consider them as odipaka, stimulus, for the enjoyment of their leelas. Hey <coughs> sabachodato kahi nahi jao. I refuse to go anywhere giving up all of these stimulate, stimulants. To abandon all of these is to give up life itself. says, O Kana, O Krishna, please hear me. Because all this Udipan stimulates remembrance of you and Shimati Radhika and of your extraordinarily sweet pastimes. They are all my very life and soul. That is why I brought you all. That is why I brought you all here. To touch the effects of Krishna. To touch the high class of pastimes, places of